Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about using electrolysis to clean rusty parts and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Sorry, we're going to be on the dodgy camera today until I can get the better one back from repair. But what we're going to do today is set up an electrolysis bath, uh, immerse some of these rusty parts from the steel trawler and see how they come out. The idea with electrolysis is you have a non-conductive, in this case I've got a plastic drum that I'm using to put the electrolyte in, which is a solution of just water with sodium carbonate, so washing soda essentially. And then we put the metal part, we suspend the metal part we want to clean in the centre of the tub. Then we have some metal pieces around the outside that become our sacrificial anodes. Then we hook up power supply, so the negative goes to the piece we're cleaning, the positive goes to the sacrificial anodes then the process of electrolysis begins. The idea with electrolysis is that you're using electricity to split molecules apart. So some of the bubbles you'll see are hydrogen and oxygen, which is your water being separated into its constituents, but you'll also get oxygen coming out of the rust, so you're turning this ferric oxide back into just pure iron. The iron you have is a bit porous because of that, so it needs treating pretty much straight away, but you have got rid of most of the rust. For my anodes, I'm going to use just some straight steel, mild steel round bar. So the first thing I'll do is just cut that up into manageable lengths. I hope you're as excited as Eddie is. Under the house, I found a roll of household electrical wire left over from when the house was built. So I'm just going to strip a single core of this and we'll use that to connect all our anode rods together. What I'm going to do here is just strip a bit of the outer shielding off. Then on the ends here that I've cleaned up and put the groove in, I'll just run it through the groove and then give it some twists like that. Here you can see the wire, the bare part of the wire is touching the rod, twist it around a bit. Then on the end here I've just tied a knot so that it can't pull through. So we're going to repeat that process for all four sides and all four rods, well one flat bar, three rods. Alright, what we've got now is our red wire electrically connected to all the anodes like this and then all connected to each other. So that red wire starts here, winds around them all, and just finishes here. All right, before I go any further, I'm gonna get our solution going. All right, gonna start by putting about 40 liters of water into our tub. It's probably about 50 or 60 liters actually, but it's good to have the depth for the parts I'm doing. Now what I'm going to do is add the sodium carbonate to the tub. I just grabbed this from near the pool because it's used for adjusting the pH of pools. In this case it raises the pH, so it's an alkaline. So I'm just going to pop some gloves on and some safety glasses. And the general ratio is about sort of half a cup for 20 litres. So I'm going to put, I think maybe even two cups in there, cup and a half, something like that. Sodium carbonate is the best stuff to use because it does the job well and it's relatively safe. Because, as we were saying before, electrolysis takes molecules and splits them into constituent atoms. So if you use something like regular salt, you'll end up releasing chlorine gas and other toxic things. The only real risk with this is hydrogen and oxygen is being produced, so make sure the area is well ventilated and avoid any sort of sparks, no smoking, that kind of stuff. All right, we want to try and spread this round a fair bit so we can get it to mix in. All right, just give that a good stir now until it's dissolved. I'm going to use my stirring rod across the top here to suspend the piece I'm cleaning from. I'm going to start by trying the flap from the wet exhaust. 
I'm going to hang it through the holes here, so I'm just going to give them a little clean just to make sure we get a good electrical connection there. Because it's a relatively light part, I'm going to suspend it with wire. If it was a heavier part, you could suspend it with chain. As long as it's conductive, you're fine. All right, now I just need to suspend this so it's in the solution, not touching the bottom and not touching any of our anode grid around the outside. Now we connect this wire to the negative and this wire to the positive. Ideally, I would use some black wire for this because getting this around the wrong way is pretty catastrophic. If you get it the wrong way, you're actually just gonna damage the part you're trying to clean. This is the power supply setup I'm using. I've got the two wires for our anodes and cathodes coming off this old battery here, and then I've got the battery hooked up to a battery charger the whole time. The advantage of this is the battery gives us sort of a slightly higher peak load or whatever that comes straight from the battery and also it sort of cleans the current coming from the battery charger. There can be a slight AC quality to the DC coming from the battery charger here because of its conversion and this stops that happening. Obviously we don't want AC because we want it all flowing in one direction otherwise we're actually damaging the part we're cleaning at the same time. So this is the setup I've been recommended to go with. So pretty much straight away you start seeing bubbles come off. Actually, this is a waterproof camera. Why don't we stick it in and see what it looks like? Okay, now I'm going to let that keep going for a few hours. This area is well ventilated. I mean, it's just open to the garden, so there's no... No issues with these gases building up here. So we'll let it run for a little while. And while it's going, we'll talk a little bit about the theory of what's actually happening. All right, deep breath and we'll go through what's happening here. I'm not a chemist, no expert, but by and large, it's kind of high school chemistry. That was 30 years ago, so bear with me. Okay, so in order to get iron to rust or any sort of iron compound like steel, we steer iron and carbon, then you need oxygen and you need water. So the oxygen and the iron are water bonding together to make iron oxide, which is your rust, but you need a sort of a, an electrolyte for the electrons to flow. Water conducts electricity, but salt water conducts electricity even more, which is why salt water causes rust much more quickly. Now, the way they bond has a lot to do with their outer valence shells. In this case, iron has two electrons, oxygen has six. They're trying to get back to a stable state, so iron is much more likely to give up its two, and oxygen wants to gain two more to get back to a full shell of eight. So this is why oxygen's considered to oxidize something, and oxidizing is actually giving up electrons. They're slightly misleading terms, uh, because of the history of how the process was discovered. Anyway, so once we get this, we end up with iron oxide or ferric oxide, same thing. And this is our formula here, and these are the bonds. So here's a diagram of our little uh, electrolysis bath, and what happens here is reduction, which is the opposite part of the process to oxidizing. So you always have oxidation and reduction happening. They're two half reactions. You can't have one without the other. You know, it's the case of giving an electron to something. Something's always going to lose one, something's always going to gain one. And in this case, what we're doing is we're reducing the rust, which means that by giving it an electron back, it no longer bonds with the oxygen. So we're actually freeing the oxygen. So when we reduce the rust, oxygen's given off. We also reduce the water, which means it frees up as oxygen. So we get oxygen and hydrogen coming off the water and oxygen coming off the, the cathode, which is, in this case, the bit of metal we're trying to repair. So what we end up with is a few stages. We have our iron oxide, then we go to magnetite. So in this case, we've got two thirds of it is uh, iron. In this case, three quarters of it is iron. You keep working towards until you get to sort of pure iron, essentially. Because we've got reduction happening at the cathode, we have to have oxidation happening at the anode. Once again, they have to be in pairs, which is why our anodes start to get really rusty and oxidized as our cathode gets cleaner and cleaner. All right, so here's our moment of truth. This has actually been on for a while now, probably been on for about uh, almost a week, to be honest with you. When we get it out, we're gonna need to clean it up, just give it a quick brush, dry it, and prime it straight away. Because we've taken the oxygen out of the rust, 
we're left with iron but slightly porous iron so it'll rust even faster than a solid iron would so we've got to get it primed really fast. A little bit of thinners in the epoxy will also help it sort of soak into that porous iron so it should be okay for lots of years after this. First thing you notice is how manky the anodes are. All the oxidations happen there as the reduction's been happening on our old uh, exhaust flap. But here it is. So let's get it on the bench, dry it off and get it primed. You can also see in the bottom of the tub how much kind of rust is sitting down there. You're probably wondering what's the advantage to doing this over just brushing the rust off to start with. And the reason is when you brush it off you're taking the iron and the oxygen, you're taking the rust molecule away. Whereas in this case you're just taking the oxygen so you're left with much more metal than if you'd actually just brushed it down to quick metal. This probably isn't the ideal part to show this process with in the sense that it's uh, probably easy to remake and relatively thin. But hopefully it gives you an idea anyway. This bit now is the bottom of the rudder post. I'm going to whack this in because it's much, much heavier. I'm going to hang it from a chain and then just clip the wire, the negative wire, onto the chain. Before we wrap up, it's worth showing you the anodes. And what you notice with the anodes is you kind of get this grain heading along it. So if you see rust or corrosion on a steel boat and it's running with this sort of grain pattern, you know it's caused by a stray current through the hull rather than a galvanic action or rust. So definitely something to keep an eye out for. All right, here we go again with the bigger bit. I'll leave this at least a week as well. So just got suspended by the chain, then just the wire wedged under the chain. Bubbles forming, let me know that everything's conducting nicely. All right, well, thanks for watching. I hope this video helps you understand how to use electrolysis to fix your rusty parts. Just be careful with ventilation, that's the main thing. Because oxygen and hydrogen are given off, it can be explosive if it's a confined space and there's some sort of ignition source. So an open area like this or fans going, whatever, just be careful with that side of things. All right, we'll take care and I'll catch you soon. See ya.